in-depth review of one of my machines. This time we will take a look at an IBM ThinkPad because somebody of you wanted me to do it. I am in fact the owner of three ThinkPads. One of them is a Lenovo to our IBM, but we will take a look at this one. This right here is an IBM ThinkPad i1116 um, from the series 1200. It's so freaking complicated with all of their series, but it's the i series. I can guarantee you that because it tells it right there. Um, so yeah, uh, it was built in 2000. And I will tell you now the original specifications. It had the same processor, 500 megahertz Celeron, but it only had 64 megabytes of RAM and it came with Windows 98 and had a six gigabyte hard disk. So all of this has changed. It runs a different operating system. It has a different hard disk and it has more RAM, but that, those were the original specs. I don't know about the battery size, um, doesn't couldn't find it anywhere, but um, yeah, uh, probably not too great of battery life. Now this battery is completely dead. Anyway, I just kept it in there so I can show you. So before we boot this thing up, we'll take a look at, around it. Um, by modern standards, it is quite thick. It really is. Uh, but we will not bother about comparing this to modern laptops since you know it would be it would be so stupid. Um, yeah, IBM ThinkPads, these are really not known to be the most beautiful things in the world, but they are known to be very reliable, very robust and good quality built machines. And that is definitely true in this one. When I made a video about it, where we installed Windows 2000 on it, I told you already that this was owned by a family, uh, which uh, had a lot of kids, not their kids, but a lot, lot of kids were staying there and this computer was getting mashed and had the, the like the most horrendous life ever and the only uh, scars it took from this from this uh, time was uh, literally scars is these scuffs up there uh, I don't know if you can see them it doesn't really come out on camera but there was I don't know who did that but uh, maybe you could like get it polished out or whatever but these were the only visible damages and this computer is being almost 20 years old so you gotta respect that um we'll take a look at the connectors it has usb of course one but i find it crazy that it has usb although in 2000 maybe that wasn't such a big deal anymore but still i find it cool we got an expansion card slot i used to stick in here a ethernet adapter so they could go on the internet but i never really did uh then we go in the front we've got nothing but the latches we got a CD drive, no DVD drive, but CD drive, which still works, incredible. Then we got the power input, a PS2 mouse, a printer port, um, a modem port. Here should have gone the Ethernet, but um, that wasn't the case on this particular model. A VGA output, but only to mirror. You can't like hook up a secondary monitor to it. Then we got here to uh, the audio jacks, a headphone jack and microphone and another USB one. So this old machine already has two USB ports. Take a listen to that Apple nowadays. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, um, you know, it's a machine from 2000. So um, these ports are, you know, almost all of them are out of date. Now we got here the, the CPU fan. And I got the idea that I will make a video about the similarities of this old IBM ThinkPad to my new uh, Lenovo ThinkPad. Well, it's not that new, but the, like the similarities that these computers have are still very like crazy. Uh, and that's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing. So we get the CPU fan here, uh, uh, air intake here, another one down there. It's kind of weird. It would kind of block everything, but they decided to, to put it down there. On the other side, we got the Windows 98 SE license sticker and the battery, which can be easily taken out. You just flip this latch and then it should come out somehow. Oh yeah, this way, okay. And yeah, here is the battery. Um, of course, very dead. 
but it's the original one, so I'm keeping that. And yeah, makes the machine quite a bit heavier. When you take it out, it's like <laughs> very light compared to with the battery. Here goes the RAM. Um, it has 64 bit. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> no, it surely has a 64 bit. <laughs> no. It has 64 megabytes already pre soldered, and another uh, module is in here too. I think it has now 192 megs of RAM. I'm not sure. It's a uh, normal SD RAM. Good, so there's nothing more to show you. It's a laptop, you know, it does have so many features like a desktop machine. So we'll now flip it up. And another thing maybe where you can see the edges uh, is the, the hinge. Uh, the hinge is pretty worn. It's like um, this heavy display. This is um, a very, very old LCD display. Uh, this is from the time where LCDs were really something brand new and well in 2000 you already had pretty okay LCDs this was like still 90s technology this wasn't cutting edge in 2000 and it definitely shows when you compare for example uh, a Apple iBook clamshell to the, to this uh, the clamshell screen is way nicer to look at than this. This is the old school color matrix display. Uh, they are, they're, they've, I think, never been too nice to look at. But this one being 20 years old, having a tons of hours of usage on it, it's definitely, it's still working, but it's definitely worn out. We'll show you that, of course, later. But uh, first, we'll take a look at this awesome keyboard. IBM nailed it with keyboards. They make the best keyboards in the world. I'm not exaggerating. I think their keyboards are epic. Uh, I got a friend who has a retro IBM uh, mechanical keyboard. It makes a ton of noise, but it's like the best thing ever to type on. And this one, well, being not mechanical, of course, like for a laptop being 20 years old, it, it doesn't feel worn to begin with. And it also it it's feel, it feels so nice. Like I could type all day with this keyboard. And um, like this is this is how it should be on a laptop, I really think. Now one thing that you still have on nowadays ThinkPads, I think still on, on, uh, on modern ones, uh, is the track point, which I never really use on mine, um, but it's there. On this one, it's you have to use it. There's no other way. Then we got here the mouse buttons, which are still the same like they always had on the IBMs. And I think they're great. Um, and yeah, so then we got some function keys, go to home home page and whatnot, email, and the power button, of course. As you can see the battery is dead. And yeah, that's all we got. We got this epic keyboard that didn't make any compromises. This should be a work machine and it definitely Definitely was that. Now let's plug it in and boot it up and see what happens. We got all of these uh, indicators. Still uh, quite a bunch of those are on modern ThinkPads. So when you, when you press the power button, it takes a while to bring up the bias. And it's probably going to make a beast, uh, uh, a, a nasty beep sound like ee or something because the CMOS in it would need a replacement part. Yep, yeah, would need a new CMOS battery. All right, we get 196 megabytes of RAM. Okay, yeah, so this is the total. Let's hit enter and let's boot. Now, there's something special about this particular ThinkPad. Um, I threw out the hard disk it had. It, uh, the original one was dead anyway when we got it. That was years ago. Then I put in a 40 gig normal drive and now I put um, a SD card adapter in it with uh, an SD card of four gigabytes. And I think this is a, like putting um, SD cards in these old machines is the best way to keep them alive since these old hard disks, they're, they're going to fail eventually. And also, 
like it's so easy i can stick in another sd card if i need a bigger one or whatever i can exchange files more easily and it's it's definitely the way to go on retro computing in my opinion so as you can see it booted up pretty fast windows 2000 uh, again it came with 98 but i decided to put 2000 on here you could even um run xp pretty smoothly i did that but I decided to downgrade for retro sakes to 2000. So here you go. Windows 2000, we got 196 megabytes of RAM. And yes, of course, I will show you more infos about the, the processor. We get your CPU ID. And as you can see, the display is just not very nice. Let's try to adjust it a bit. Let's try to make it a little brighter. Or uh, maybe that's not the best idea. This, this is better, okay. And it kind of always resets itself also. I don't know why it does that. But uh, now it's a little nicer to look at. We got an amazing resolution of 800 by 600. <laughs> it has the option of 1024 by 768 also. But it's it's not ideal. I will show you later. We got here the Celeron 500 megahertz copper mine generation. Just, re you know, relatively standard for the time. The main board is of course the proprietary one being a laptop here we got the ram and also this weird graphic chip we get the silicon motion uh, linux linux em plus i've never personally heard of this gpu before must have gone out of business um has four megabytes of ram and yeah this is the the gpu in it so that's that's all i can show you about here now i'll show you the resolution problem when we go in here and go to settings and then crank it up to 10. Oh, that's not too much. That's way too much. Uh, 1024 by 768. It will, it will scale it, but as you can see there, it, <laughs> it like, who invented that? I don't know. It's so weird. But yeah, this is how it, how it is. And if you try to put it even higher, I don't know what's going to happen. Nothing, okay. Yeah, this, this is definitely not the resolution. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go back to our trusty 800 by 600, which is this display's full resolution. And yeah, this is how you have to use it. So I have to admit, this display really doesn't look great and it's it's kind of annoying to look at after a while, but it's still working. Uh, it has some ghosting issues and it, it's like having all these lines, like as you can see there, there's a line in here when you put up windows and stuff. So I don't know how long it's going to keep going, but I have to say, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, Everything works, every connector works, the, the speakers work, as you, as you heard. Everything works on this system, and it's really astonishing. You know, who, whoever owned that before, probably a company, um, must have taken care of it, and then it went to all these kids, you know, uh, and then it came back to me. So it's a great laptop. It, it's sturdy. It's definitely not the nicest thing to look at. It's, it's, it's really ugly, some might say, but it's functional and it doesn't thermal throttle and yeah you can type on it very nicely and that's something that a modern macbook pro isn't really good at so uh yeah that's everything i can show you uh, about uh, my old ibm thinkpad this is definitely a piece of history for me personally it's not some some crazy thinkpad that changed the ibm market or, or the ibm company in any way but uh it's 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 for me something cool old laptop is always uh cool to look at how technology in, evolved over the years and stuff so yeah hopefully you liked it and i will see you later